Hi, how are you? And welcome to the Roland Keith Shed again. Today, something a little bit different. I was given uh, six 12 volt, seven amp batteries. Um, they've come out of service from, a, from various different security systems. And I'd actually like to use them for mine, uh, but run them off the solar. So that, you know, basically they run 24 seven and don't draw any power off anything, you know, off the main system. And seems I've got the solar, I may as well. So with these type of batteries, um, they'll actually have a very long service life, up to five, six years maybe, uh, providing they're not drained down too heavily per day and the charge up cycle is correct every day. So these batteries are basically around two years old, so they've got, they've got pretty much, you know, another three years left in them. So for me to put these into service and to see you know, how many of these six batteries are good enough to do that, um, I'm gonna have to do some tests and checks, and then if that all scrubs up okay, then I'll put them into service. And this video is all about showing you how I'm going to test the batteries, both for voltage and load test them, then secondly, wire them up and actually run them in the system so that you know, it all functions and it runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without any draw on the main system. So the first thing we want to do is charge the batteries up, make sure each battery is fully charged up. Once they are, then we can do the full test and check. Okay, now that all the batteries are charged up, it's time to test each one for both the voltage and we'll do a load test as well. As you can see, I've done up a small sheet here, very simple, just so that I can see uh, or measure and write down and record what each battery is, is up to in terms of its voltage and its load test. So over here, we've got the meter. Um, this will show us the voltage. So what we're hoping to do is to try and come up to around about 12 volts up here, or maybe a little bit more. Um, so, okay, let's test each battery, log them down and see how they turn out just in the voltage department. So we'll start off with battery one. Okay, so battery one. Battery one is reading oh, just over 12 volts approximately. So we'll mark that as 12 volts. Okay, so I'll write that down, battery one, 12 volts. So that's a good sign. Battery two, we're reading that pretty similar, 12 volts. Excellent. So that's two batteries in terms of voltage I can use out of the six. Battery three, showing 12 volts on battery three. Oops. Battery four. Let me just move that out the way so I've got some room. There we go. Battery four. Yep, just over 12 volts again. Battery five. Basically the same again. And battery six. Yep, 12 volts again, or just over. So in terms of voltage, so far, these batteries are all good. Now what we'll do is the load test. Okay, now I've set up for the load test. 
uh, I've actually tested battery number one first and that's the marker where that comes to. So what I'm looking for is the other five batteries to come up to basically the same mark on the load test. Now this load tester is designed for a 200 amp battery. So a seven amp battery is very, very small. So I'm really putting these under immense amount of stress by load testing them up using this particular device. However, it, what it will do is give me a very clear indication as to whether all these six batteries are exactly the same. So that was number one. So I'll write this down as on the mark or just mark. And let's test battery number two and see how that comes. Okay, low test battery number two. Let's see if it goes on the mark. Slightly under the mark, but looking at the scale, well within spec. <laughs> because if I was to see a battery, say, I don't know, probably drop down to say this sort of level, <clears throat> I would say that battery is not good to put into the circuit. And if we're sort of up here, um, yeah, the battery is more than fine to put into the circuit. So let's test battery number three. Get these annoying clamps on. Well, they're only annoying because of these. Because they're so tiny. Okay. Testing battery three. Let's go. That's fine. Let's test battery four. Battery four is in circuit for testing. Let's load it. That's acceptable. We test battery five. That's on the money. So we've got three is on the mark, four is on the mark, five is on the mark, now battery six. So, so far out of the six batteries, I can put, I can use all five. All right, battery six. Oh, battery six is high. Okay, now that we've uh, load tested each battery and we've tested the voltages and we've found that uh, each one's basically the same, the next step is to uh, look at the wiring up process for these batteries so that I can put them into circuit. So what I've got now is I've got six 12 volt batteries, uh, all at seven amps each. Combined, they'll give me a 42 amp battery or battery bank. So again, the next thing we do is we wire them up in such a way that I get the 42 amps, but retain the 12 volts. And to do that, we gotta wire all the reds together, all the positives together, and all the blacks together. If I go out of a red and into a black, and then out of a black and back into a red, that's gonna multiply up the voltages. So we don't want that. We wanna keep it at 12 volts. So to maximize all the amps, we'll wire them positive to positive to positive all the way through, and negative to negative to negative all the way through, and that'll give me one solid bank of batteries that equals to 42 amps. Okay, so let's do the wiring. Okay, wiring these up is going to be pretty simple. I've got uh, two types of wire here. One's got aluminium in the, in the uh, insulation and one has got copper in the insulation. So first of all, what I'll do 
is cut my wires to length because I want to jump from positive to positive. Strip this. Put our insulated spay terminal on. And there we have all our positives joined up with our output lead. Now, okay, with the output lead, I want to put in a fuse and a switch, which is really, really easy to do with this because I want to isolate it. If I need to turn the system off to do anything, change a battery out or whatever, I can turn it off. It's not going to affect anything, not going to affect the solar. Um, turn it back on if I need it. And of course, naturally, I'll put in a fuse. And in this case, I'm going to put in a five amp fuse, given I've got 42 amps worth of batteries. So to jump in the fuse, that's going to be very easy. What I'll do is I'll cut my wire at this point here. Strip the wire. Get a terminal. Crimp him down. It's nice and tight. And that becomes one half of my fuse. The remaining piece of wire. Strip again. Get another terminal out. Crimp that down. Nice and solid. Into the other half of the fuse. So there's your fuse. Easy to replace. A really good mount. Quite well insulated. You can't actually get up to the blades. And now finally I want to put in a switch. So that's going to be easy to do as well basically the same as the fuse, just chop in and put my switch in. So, I'll put the switch just a little bit away from the fuse. Strip our wire, our balance of wire. That'll go into our switch, which is positive. And now we will put a terminal on this. And this principle is exactly the same for uh, 
even for car batteries or any type of batteries really if you want to maintain the same uh, voltage but just increase the amperage and there's our switch okay and that now will go and feed uh, the uh, camera as well as the uh, charge up power from the solar will come into this line here go through go through the fuse go through all of these batteries so now all I have to do is the negative side loop all the negatives together and this bank is good to good to put into the system Okay, through fast forwarding, I've spared you the grief of seeing me do the wiring in real time. But as you can see, we've got all the positives looped together, all the negatives looped together, uh, making this one complete battery now, uh, that, which calculates out to 42 amps and it would still deliver 42 amps because we load tested the batteries and they're all basically good. Uh, now comes the wiring into the system and what I've got for that is on the earth I have two lines one's for charging the battery bank and the other one is to feed the camera and on the power side again one's for charging and one's to feed the camera and naturally this is our fuse so once that's connected the battery banks live so what we'll do now is we'll actually wire that into the system and let's see it work. Okay, well I'm happy to say the whole lot's finished now. Um, I've got everything wired up, everything's working properly. Uh, the system's doing exactly what it should do. It's actually running my camera up there and the solar system is charging up the bank of batteries down here. So as you can see, everything's finished now, everything's wired up. I've got my isolation switch here uh, uh, that protects these batteries along here. And this uh, 100 amp switch up here is protecting the big batteries. So now I can switch between both banks of batteries for charging and for use. Uh, which is exactly what I wanted to do because naturally whilst I'm running this bank of batteries I don't want any charge coming out of these and vice versa and the whole purpose for this is really um, so that these large batteries here um, they uh, will actually live there longest if uh, if they're just sitting there absolutely idle but fully charged which they are and now I can utilize this bank of batteries to do the work of the menial task of running my security camera all the time. Which means, uh, I mean, basically one battery could run my security camera 24 hours a day, but having a bank of six is dividing the effort uh, by six, which means these batteries aren't doing any work at all. Um, and the amount of time they have left, I'll be able to absolutely maximize it because the solar is charging them exactly how they need to be charged. It's got a, a processor in the charging system that det detects the batteries and works out exactly what, they, uh, what they're looking for when it comes to a charge. And the usage requirement is very minimal. The camera occupies 300 milliamps, so that's 0.3 of an amp. And bearing in mind, one of these batteries here is seven amps. So just to recap on how it's all working, um, if I go mobile, all right, up here on my display, um, basically on the display, you're showing here that there's 39 volts on the panel out of those 39 volts, 
it's uh, only seen fit to uh, yank 0.5 of an amp out and convert it to 1.2 amps of charging current and putting it in the batteries. <coughs> now, as you can see, the batteries are completely full. Uh, well, they're about, so, I mean, the solar is, is actually stabilizing or equalizing all of the batteries. However, now if I go to my isolation switch down here and flick that switch off, I should lose battery. There you go. To switch batteries or to switch systems, all I need to do is flick on my 100 amp switch and that'll switch over to the large batteries. So that's working exactly as it should. So if I turn that off, now between both, both switches down there that are now off in the off position, my system is not registering batteries. What's showing is just the, uh, the power from the sun running the controller uh, and the, uh, the display box. So to turn everything back on and get it working properly, I need to turn off my solar. I know this is all a bit agricultural, but this is all going to be put into a box one day or into a cabinet and properly wired up. So now I have nothing functioning at all. Power from the sun's been cut power from the batteries is cut. So to turn on the secondary bank of batteries down here, we turn on the switch and that shall power up the system like so. Then we turn on the solar like so. We don't need 12 volt power there. So I'll turn that off. And there's the system running there. So that's a secondary bank of batteries. There's only 15 volts on both panels at the, being produced at the moment because uh, I'm pretty much in, well the panels are pretty much in full shade. However, oh there you go, it's bumped up a little bit. Um, so yeah, the system at this time of day, which is coming around at 7 p.m. summer, um, with shaded panels, uh, I got 28 volts on the panels. It's con the uh, charge controller box here is converting that into 14 volts at one amp. Uh, so the batteries are not on a float charge, they're on a bulk charge at the moment. Um, and that's because uh, this freshly connected bank of batteries now need to stabilize and equalize. So over the course of the next sort of 24 hours or the next full sun day, those batteries will equalize and they'll run at their optimum. So there you have it guys. Um, rather than utilizing this big bank of batteries here, which is my backup, which will run my fridge and run uh, house lighting, uh, I can keep that fully charged up, ready to go any time and this bank of batteries is running this sundry task of a security camera they'll do that 24 hours a day seven days a week for the next oh, good good couple of years anyway and additionally how i've got them wired up i can hit that green switch which will isolate everything if one of these batteries along here is faulty i can just simply unplug it out swap it out with another one or I can actually just leave it unplugged out and I go from six batteries down to five. So there you have it. That is my humble addition to my system.